Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss Zombieland Double Tap, starring Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, Abigail Breslin, Zoe Dolch, Avon Gia, forgive me if I said that wrong, Rosario Dawson, Luke Wilson, and Middle Thomas Middleditch, and directed by Ruben Fleischer. Now, let's just get straight into this movie because there might be some things that might be a little too scary for kids. I'll say. So please don't let them watch this video as well as no take them to this movie because it's terrible for them. Let's get into it. The movie starts with Columbus, returned by Jesse Eisenberg, bringing viewers up to speed on what has begun been going on in Zombieland since he and his friends Tallahassee, returned by Woody Harrelson, Wachita, returned by Emma Stone, and Little Rock, returned by Abigail Breslin, were last seen. And I appreciated that first sequel. Another thing I appreciated for a sequel was they had been begun to give code names for specific zombies when going to kill them, for example, slow and fat ones are referred to Homers, like Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. The smarter ones are Hawkings, and the sneaky ones are called Ninjas, and it's clever, but not as clever as last time. In the ruins of Washington, D.C., our heroes slaughter a whole pack of zombies in front of the White House before deciding to make themselves comfortable inside. They spend a long time in there as they make it their home, but eventually Little Rock becomes bored and wishes to find out uh, other survivors her own age, which is normal. She is also not pleased with Tallahassee still treating her like a child, which is understandable, I understand that. Columbus and Wachita understand understand Little Rock's frustration, but they have a deliberately avoiding contact with potential survivors due to the worldwide anarchy and of others being murderous scavengers and killers. Meanwhile, the two of them are still going as a couple, but when Columbus decides to propose to Wachita with the Hope Diamond, she becomes unsure and hesitant, which is typical sequel th a typical sequel thing. I don't necessarily like it that much. It almost reminds me of fucking B Paul Blart Ball I mean, Mall Cop 2, and I don't want to re be reminded of that whatsoever. In the morning, Columbus and Tallahassee find a note from the sisters that state that they have left, and with Tallahassee's truck the beast called the beast and it rem again reminded me of fucking Paul Blart Mall Cop and just like that J Columbus is dejected and disappointed on the road which I and Little Rock encounter a survivor named a hippie named Berkeley played by Avon Jajia and I honestly don't really like that character because he was annoying and he was in another movie where he didn't act annoying, and that I reviewed him recently in the 2019 version of Shaft. And after spending a month together, the guys before explore at a mall where they find some zombies, they kill them and find a survivor, a dumb blonde named Madison, played by Zoe Dolch. Nowhere's. And now here's an actress I've seen. I like seeing in movies like Vampire Academy, Before I Fall, in a movie I only watch because of her, Why Him, and I reviewed her before in The Disaster Artist. She is a likable character as she is excited to not only find survivors, but one is, that is a guy. Columbus convinces a reluctant Tallahassee to bring Madison back home with them. She attempts to seduce Columbus. But he is not ready as he still misses Wachita. When Madison threatens to sleep with Tallahassee, Columbus seizes the opportunity, which did crack me the fuck up. And Madison is adorable in this movie, and I'm liking Columbus and Tallahassee and Wachita. But Little Rock was a little a bit obnoxious, and she kind of bugged me here. Not long after the the guys hear a noise in the place and discover Wachita has returned to get some guns. She informs them that Little Rock has run off with Berkeley to Graceland in the Beast, which already pisses off Tallahassee, but the final straw for him is 
When Machida mentions that Berkeley is a pacifist, Machida then finds that Columbus is now with Madison, and she is not amused, which did crack me the fuck up, too. The four then hand off to find Little Rock, and however, Tallahassee is displeased to find that Wichita ride in, rides in a Wichita's ride is a minigan, which is strictly which he strictly refuses to drive. And I love Woody Harrelson's reaction to the mini, minivan; it was hysterical. The four come across two potential new vehicles: an ice cream truck with a clown on it, or a tour bus. And we learned last time Columbus is afraid of clowns, so they opt for the tour bus while walking toward it. Columbus and Wachita discuss how they only become a couple because they could only find each other in a, this apocalyptic wasteland, which wasn't necessarily the right time. Madison opens the door of the tour bus, which attracts the attention of zombies, which was a bad idea. The other three arm themselves to fight back, and one zombie almost bites Madison's foot before Columbus kills it. Then they come across a zombie, who isn't immediately killed with a double tap, so it has to take more shots until Tallahassee stomps on its head, in which was graphic. These harder to kill zombies are nicknamed T-800s, like in Terminator. For example, I love the callback, that callback. The gang then takes the bus and their tires get blown out of the road spikes. Since Columbus refuses the ice cream truck, they are forced to keep riding in the fucking minivan, which was cracking me up half to death. Little Rock and Berkeley ride the beast while smoking Berkeley's weed, which was funny in a dangerous kind of way. He also claims to be a songwriter, but is just singing songs that were popular before he's in before he's in, um, in and he's an imbecile meanwhile on the road madison starts to get sick and starts vomiting and her skin looking rotten they pull over and columbus follows her in the woods she claims to be fine but starts looking more like a zombie columbus and the viewers finally realize that Madison was indeed bitten and on her foot by the zombie and she is turning into one of the into one he has no choice but to shoot her before going back to Tallahassee and Wichita to make which what made him very feel very sad the trio make get to Graceland but can't stop Little Rock or the Beast they drive until they see lights at the Hound Dog Hotel, an Elvis-themed spot. They find the beast parked outside, which was, which, woohoo! They enter the place and meet Nevada, played by Rosario Dawson, who I all like seeing in the movies, including here, who draws her gun on the trio until she learns they are harmless. She tells Wachita that Little Rock Ber and Berkeley took off earlier the, that morning, but left the beast there. Damn it! Nevada also knows about the slaying of Bill Murray, but isn't aware that it was Columbus's fault, which was a funny callback. She allows the three to stay there for the night. Tallahassee bonds with Nevada over their short, shared love of Elvis, and I really had fun with Woody Harrelson's Elvis impression. It was just fun at best. Berkeley comes to the drive, continues the drive with Little Rock as he explains to her that they are going to Babylon, a safe haven for zombie survivors. When they get there, Little Rock is forced to give up her guns since Babylon has a strict no gun policy. So they melt the weapons down, which is a which is fucking inconvenient. Particularly when I get to the end of the movie, what a stupid rule! When you are surrounded by zombies, 
Meanwhile, on the next day, Tallahassee goes outside and finds a monster truck driving onto the beast. Stepping on out of the truck is Albuquerque, Kirker, Q, whatever the hell his name is, played by Luke Wilson, who's the biggest douchebag in this movie, and Flagstaff, played by Thomas Middleditch, who are both essentially doppelgangers of Tallahassee and Columbus, which is very funny and fun to see two of the characters are the same person, Tallahassee and Alba Kirkue, both buttheads while Columbus and Flagstaff compare their set of rules and co or commandments. In Flagstaff's case, which I like for its comparedness, after hanging for a bit, some T-800 zombies start attacking the monster truck. Which will be kind of a off-screen fight as Albuquerque and Flagstaff head out to kill them and seemingly victorious until they are shown to have been bitten and quickly morph into the same super zombies. Tallahassee smashes Albuquerque, something like that, head with a guitar with Nevada finishing off Flagstaff with a headshot, which I felt bad because I liked him as a character. Tallahassee asks if it was a zombie kill the year, but Columbus says that honor goes to an Italian man who dropped the leaning tower of Pisa, Pisa onto some zombies, which was clever, which is which was a clever trick in my opinion. The trio prepared to head off to continue their search for Babylon in Tallahassee and Nevada part ways with a kiss on the way they find that Madison is still alive and driving the ice cream truck which did shock the hell out of me in a good way it turns out she just had a little allergic reaction to eating nuts and Columbus shot her over her head which shocked the hell out of me in a, also a good way the gang finally arrives at, the, at Babylon where they also have give up their have to give up their weapons and again what a stupid role they find little rock as well she seems fine staying there and doesn't think her friends would fit there that night Tallahassee decides the other should stay in Babylon while he heads off on his own he bids his friends farewell but as he drives away he notices T-800 zombies heading towards Babylon as they are attracted by the fireworks that are popping out off, which is a fucking horrible idea, by the way. He runs back to warn everyone, and he tells them they need to fight back, since there were, since there are n absolutely no weapons in this place, and that's why it's a stupid rule. Tallahassee comes up with the plan to light the zombies up with biodiesel, fuel, and fireworks. The gang lures the zombies with the lights before getting ready to light it up. The biofuel tank, it causes a huge explosion. But it's not enough to kill the massive hard horde of zombies. And the main four accept their fate and huddle together right before Nevada shows up in the nick of time and runs home over some zombies with the monster truck, which is badass. The gang hops in the truck, but hops in the trunk. But the zombies flip over, and they have to keep running. And I thought, damn, they're fucked. Tallahassee puts a second plan into effect by having himself and the group run to the top of the highest tower in Babylon. The survivors form a path with shields as the zombies chase Tallahassee, which is a fun but yet good idea he leaps over the edge and grabs out to a hook while the super zombies plummet on their deaths which is so damn funny in a clever kind of way two stragglers grab onto Tallahassee's leg making him almost slip until Little Rock pulls off a pistol and kills them with a good callback was a which good callback they pull Tallahassee back to safety in the aftermath, which is which Chida decides to accept Columbus's proposal, which was sweet. Tallahassee and Nevada 
get together with, while Little Rock breaks up with Berkeley so he can hook up with Madison, which was a relief. The gang, now joined by Nevada, leaves Babylon to continue their journey on the road. Columbus states that he no longer has to keep searching for a home because his home is right where they are with his friends. They drive off as they chase. Uh, they are chased by zombie, by a zombie, which was funny as the hell. As the credits begin to roll, with Columbus bringing up a cameo in a mid-credit scene, shows a flashback at day zero of the zombie apocalypse in 2009, with Bill Murray doing a press junket for the third, for a third Garfield movie, and I thought, in which, why would he do that? If even if he regrets doing the fucking movie, soon Al Roker and his co-host become zombies, and Bill swings into attack into action by knocking all the zombies' heads in. And I love his two lines in this scene. One is, "I ain't afraid of no ghosts from Ghostbusters," and I hate Mondays. But who likes Mondays? I I don't know. I'm not even sure anymore. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.0 out of 10. Not quite as f good as the first film, nor as funny, but it's a fun time at the movies. And I like these characters, ex except for Little Rock and Berkeley, but everyone looked like they were having a good time after 10 years. It's a lot of fun. i give this a try. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for Zombieland. And until next time, good night.